Hi everyone, today we've got something special for you. Now one of the most critical parts of your camper trailer is the canvas. And we're here at the Wax Converter Textiles Factory in the Lower Hunter at Rutherford. And we're going to be showing through the whole process on how important Australian made canvas is for your camper trailer. I'm here this morning with James Kelman from Wax Converter Textiles, one of Cub's main suppliers. James, give us a bit of a history about wax converters. Thanks Matt and welcome to the, the land of wax up here at Rutherford in the Hunter Valley. So wax converters started in 1991, it was a company founded by my, my parents. Uh, we started here with two people as a startup business, 91. We now employ about 70. Well I'm really looking forward to this tour James and uh, seeing what wax converters do and the canvas that you supply to Cub Campers. Good stuff Matt, well let's start there, with the let's first process of weaving. Okay, so Matt, here we are, we're about to enter the weaving shed. And the weaving shed is um, basically converting raw fibre, or what we call yarn. Yep. You would see it as um, sewing thread up in, the, yep. up in the cub factory. Yes. Uh, we're converting a thread like this into a woven canvas. Okay. And to do so, there's two processes. You got a warp and a weft in a fabric. The warp are all the threads running down the roll. Yeah. And then the looms put the weft across. Okay. It's all yarn involved, but there'll be two processes here. Yeah. Pretty noisy in here, but um, yeah, you'll see some pretty state-of-the-art equipment. We've only got European leading edge um, machinery in here. The warp is out of Germany, and the looms are out of, it, out of Italy. Okay. So it's um, yeah, pretty efficient stuff. Huh. Come on through. All right. Your cup canvas begins here, at the warper machine. It's here where the warp of the fabric is formed. This machine has 400 threads coming through it at one time, and it takes 3,000 of these cotton spools to form the width of the cup canvas. That's some detail. This roll here is what's known as a completed warp. Each one of these knots has 400 threads in it, which makes up the full width of the canvas. This now needs to be transported to the looms. Here are the looms where the weaving process occurs. You can see the weft yarn coming off the spool and onto the accumulators. The accumulators help avoid yarn breakages and controls the tension for entry into the loom. The loom then weaves the weft yarns across the warp by going over and under, over and under, and also pushes one thread up hard against the other to form the waterproof fabric construction. So that was the first stage of production in the canvas that's so crucial for our camper trailers. Now, how critical is it to get that process right? Well, it's a, it's a starting point, Matt. So if you get that wrong, you've got no chance moving forward to make it right, so. And strength is critical. Strength, the two ply is so much stronger than a single ply yarn as well. So yeah, um, yeah it's, um, but the, the whole thing from start to finish is critical. Right, I'm looking forward to the next stage. Next stop is the dye house department where the canvas is bleached, washed, dried and dyed. First up is the bleaching process where the machine transports the canvas all the way to the roof to prevent creasing. And there's a bath at the bottom there's it's going bath. through. There's a liquid bath, correct. Yep. I'll bleach yep. in the bottom. At the other end of the machine, the squeeze rollers squeeze out the excess uh, bleach. The roll yep. is then left for 20 hours to give the bleach time to react. All right, so here we are on the edge of the washing machine. <laughs> Give us a bit of a rundown what's happening. And yeah, basically, after the raw canvas has been bleached, we'll remove it. It's called a four bay washing station. Okay. Uh, it's a hot wash. Yeah, you can feel, feel that temperature. Feel the heat coming, yeah. Yeah. And the water runs down with gravity. You can see it uh, scaled down here. The fabric runs up and down and agitates. Okay. That's how we remove the bleach yes. in, in maximum runs. So 3,000 metre runs, we're done in three hours. Now the roll, particular roll behind us, we actually do it on dyed fabrics as well. Okay. So this is a roll of brown for the legendary Dryzer bone. I thought I could see that. Yeah, yeah so um, we prepare the cub canvas, similar, very similar to say the Dryzer bone fabric. Next stage is the heat setting. So here we are at the next stage of production. Now that looks like Dryzer bone fabric again. It is, it is indeed Matt, well picked up. But we also run your uh, your cup campers through here as well for, for, for canvas. Basically it's like another secondary process of preparation even before we get to the proofing stage. Okay. What this preparation process is for dimensional stability. 
So number one, you want to have a controlled shrinkage in a, in a tin canvas. Absolutely. So you don't want to have tapes that go into seams that crack and break down with UV. You want to have a canvas that will shrink no more than 2%. So when you stitch it, it will naturally take up on those seams and, and uh, form the, a waterproof seal. So here you'll see the stenter has clips, which is guiding the width of the fabric. Yes. That sets it. And then we've got the, uh, the tension down the roll also being set. And then the, the big uh, stenter ovens there uh, heat setting the fabric to give it a memory. Okay. Okay. Now James, we've been through three processes so far. We've been through the weeding, the bleaching and the heat setting. And we're at? Now we're at our double proofing process, which is what our brand Dynaproof is all about. Okay. Now, there's a few things with Dynaproof processing. Um, you'll see it's a two-pass system rather than one big chunky process with a thick mix. We tend to use for breathability, we find a two-pass system is far better than one. Okay. We also don't just smear it on like a knife coat, like a plastic PVC coat. You'll notice here it's a fully immersed fabric in a bath, squeezed into the rollers, into the fibres, and that'll allow for breathability and better absorption by the fibres in the, in the weave. Yeah. And um, yeah, then we've of course got our secret mix, which gives it the, um, the acrylic binder holds together the, the natural pigments uh, to hold the colour fast. We've got the waterproofing waxes, the mildew inhibitors and UV stabilizers. Now you mentioned to me before it's actually a pigment not a dye. That's right. So with, with dye stuffs you, you tend to use them in clothing fabrics where you want them to be softer and, uh, and um, less abrasive against your skin. Less abrasive exactly. Yeah. Whereas a pigment's harsher but its big advantage is the staining process. So it's a naturally formed product and it actually has greater resistance to light. So there you have the finished Fine. product. And that's actually Cub Campus canvas there. That is Cub Grow. There it is. Yeah. So we'll then roll that out. You don't want to handle 2,000 metres at one time like this. Yeah. So we then take it over to the inspection station and break it down to 50 metre rolls yeah. for your sewing team to be able to handle and cut. All right, so here we are in the lab. And this is where all the testing takes place. Correct, Matt. So this is on our finished canvas after we've done all the processing. We won't release the product until we do two key waterproofing tests. Okay. Now the first one's called a water column, yes. and the other one's called a cone test. Now what the cone test is actually very the harshest of all. You just get a piece of canvas, fold it in half and half again, and yes. form what's called a cone. Put that into a beaker, and that point of the canvas end becomes the, the key aspect. There's so much pressure on that yeah. from holding out any, any waterproofing. So we'll then pour 250 millimetres of water in there. And we'll let that stand overnight. And we expect zero leakage at all. Now we come to the water head test. Or, okay. the, or the hydrostatic pressure yep. test. Okay. So what we're doing is we're forcing water through the canvas basically to see how much water pressure you can hold before mm -hmm. giving way. As well as Dryzabone and RM Williams, another wax converters customer is the Australian Army. So we do a lot of military work as well. We're yeah. very proud suppliers to the Australian Defence Force. So this is what's called our near infrared spectrophotometer. Okay? So it's a technical machine basically to measure the infrared properties of a fabric. Really makes our guys invisible under night scopes at night time. The ISIS guys used to be able to see our troops moving at night. Now we make fabrics with infrared technology. So under night scopes they can't move. James, thanks so much for that. There's, there's quite a lot that goes into the production of the canvas and it's great to see it all done here in Australia. There's a few things once the people get their camper trailer home that's fitted with the wax converters canvas. About the seasoning and the cleaning of the canvas, can you sort of explain those two things? Yeah, sure Matt, so basically with, with the seasoning suggestion, it's not for the raw canvas itself, it's where it's been sewn into a seam, we want that sewing thread to take up on that needle hole. So the suggested is three wetting, so you wet it out, let it dry, wet it out, let it dry, let it out, and that takes the shrinkage up and then you won't have any problems where the seams are sewn. That's basically the idea behind the seasoning. In terms of cleaning, if there's any um, mould or mildew that you, know, you might have to pack up wet, that type of thing, and by the time you get home, it's a pretty simple process there where we just recommend um, like a diluted household bleach, like a lemon white king off the sh shelf at Coles or Woolies. 80% cold water, 20% bleach, 
and that'll just remove any um, stains like that. Uh, there's an old wives tale too about grease, grease, grease marks. You can use a eucalyptus oil to dab onto that grease mark and then just a white cloth will help remove that grease spot as well. Yeah. So there's some good tips there. All right. and for, for long-term storage of the canvas, I mean, is it a good idea to, if you're not using your camper trailer for a while to open it up and let it breathe? Absolutely. It's just like having um, mothballs of, a, of, a, of clothing in, in, inside the wardrobe. You know, yeah. if you can, take it out every 12 months and give it some air and a quick hose and let it dry out and put it back away. Put it back away again. All right. Yeah. That's great. Thanks for that, James. And uh, really appreciate you spending the time with us today and to go through the whole process. And uh, we're at Cub Campers, obviously very proud to use Wax Converters Canvas. Well, likewise, Matt. We're only as good as what you guys are as well. And together we've had a very successful yeah. partnership. And uh, right. we look forward to continuing. Yeah, two great Australian companies doing what we do best. Thank you very much.